it's Sarah with House Copper. Um, I know I've been doing some videos of um, how to um, clean rivets and the tools that I use for uh, tinning in the garage here. Um, but I, I know some people kind of don't know what I mean by saying that the ins inside of a pot has to be clean. So um, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to make sure that it looks clean. And then, um, and I can kind of give you again a rundown of how I, I make sure it's clean. The big thing to remember is um, every single pot is going to behave a little differently. It's all going to come in a different uh, way to me. So sometimes something's really, really oxidized and I have to work a lot harder to get it clean enough so it'll take the, the new layer of tin. Other times, you know, it's just dirty and greasy and I just need to soak it in certain acid baths and then um, and then use like sandpaper, like a, like a bristle pad or uh, sometimes wire brushes. So um, there's always a lot of elbow grease involved. And then of course around the rivets, that's, you know, that's really hard to get clean enough so that it, it takes uh, new tin. So anyway, so this is a piece. You can see some of it is, um, it's really always hard because it's so shiny, but see how I haven't removed all the tin but all the oxidation from the tin that was on there is gone. So this actually will take new tin because the tin has been completely cleaned and it's been completely, um, you know, deoxidized. So even though there's quite a bit of tin in this particular skillet, not here obviously, but here, um, I, I can essentially reuse it. When I flux this up over the fire, the tin will become liquid again, um, as well as take the new tin that I put in and all work together. Um, so this is completely ready and I don't know if the rivets are going to show up, but you can see how clean they are, like, you know, how it's almost silvery right here. Um, so these are really, really clean. They're ready to go. But what I will do right beforehand, just because with the cleaning process, you still are going to have like little tiny places, um, where dirt and grime from when you were cleaning is going to sit in there. And what's going to happen is those are that dirt's going to get swirled around with the tin and you're going to have adhering problems. Um, so I usually do an, an additional acid bath, um, a different acid right before I um, line these up to get dried and then put over the fire. Um, and what I do is with that acid, I take another wire brush and I scrub because I really want to get all of the dirt out of every tiny crack I possibly can um, to make the tinning process a lot easier for me. Um, I'm trying to see if there's other pieces to show you. Um, here. This one has been a lot more cleaned because this one actually came to me with very little tin still in it, but the tin that was in it was in really uh, rough oxidized shape. Um, but this is another one where it's maybe easier to see. I don't know why it's always so shiny. There's a little bit of darkness in all of the, the seam work there. That needs to get brought out before I tin, or I'm going to have problems. It's not going to adhere no matter how much, and then I'm going to end up burning or scorching the copper underneath and make it harder to clean later, or uh, the tin actually will start to, um, the flux will start to burn, and once you start to burn your flux while you're tinning, then you've created yet another issue for yourself. So there's always issues with tinning. Um, so there's always issues, sorry. It sucks always doing this in the shop with no like videographer. Um, but yeah, so that's what I mean. And so um, everybody's setup is gonna be a little different, but essentially um, you need um, caustic acid wash, you need a uh, muriatic acid wash, so a combination of water and those acids in separate buckets um, for the cleaning and the scrubbing. Um, you need wire bristles. You need a bead blaster if you can. You can see it's kind of right there and an air compressor. Um, you need a, um, a Dremel is like my favorite use, especially for around the rivets with all different kinds of attachments. You'll, I've shown those. Um, and then I also use a buffing wheel motor and I put on some attachments so that I can use it for um, oh, with a like a metal stripping wheel which I use for really old pieces I have an old piece here that's really old it's got um, copper handles that have been man-made um, it's actually there's already you can see the cramp seam here 
Um, it is a cram seam along the bottom that you can't see from the outside, but you, you can on the inside a little. Um, but this one came so oxidized um, because it was made in the flat by hand, completely by hand, um, um, that I needed to use the stripping wheel. So I'm gonna show you quickly what that looks like over here in the shop. So down here, so it's a buffing wheel. Um, this one only has one speed. Um, you know, it's, it's about 3,500 RPMs. And then, um, and then this is um, a stripping wheel. And, um, that, and I've attached it using kind of like basically a, a separate attachment. So um, I use this for like serious hardcore stripping. It's not ideal. Um, you, you know, you, you can remove a lot of copper this way um, it, as dust, but it's still removing metal. Um, but sometimes in order to get things to adhere, that's what you got to do. Otherwise you just, you know, if you're tinning, it, the tin won't stick. Um, okay. I think that's it for this particular subject. So as always, comments, questions, thoughts, personal experience, welcome. Um, I look forward to hearing from you all. Take care.